appearance of the blood stain on the collar and the fact that it absorbed into the weave of the uh, fabric um, indicated that it had arisen from wet blood um, landing on the jacket or otherwise being transferred to the jacket. That blood drop comes back with a full DNA profile saying one in a billion chance of it not being Stephen Lawrence. So, you know, it's Stephen Lawrence's blood for, 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 for all purposes, um, which is pretty powerful evidence. The scientists had proved that the blood was Stephen's and because it was wet when it fell onto the jacket, it must have got there during or soon after the attack. This put the jacket at the scene of the crime. Three fibres of Stephen's clothing and a hair were found on the items seized from Norris's bedroom in 1993. Hairs that we found were consistent with being Stephen Lawrence's hair. It's only really when you lay that on the layers of fibre evidence and start to build things up that the coincidence of having fibres from three different items of clothing that he was wearing and hair which is a one in a 10,000 chance is his, you start to put that together and it becomes a more compelling case. Microscopic fibres and a tiny spot of blood were all the evidence the police needed to see Gary Dobson and David Norris charged with the murder of Stephen Lawrence. The new investigation found no convicting evidence against the other three suspects and they were not charged. The trial began at the Old Bailey on the 14th of November, 2011. It was a sight to see those two people in the dock behind the security glass. And the dock is raised, and somehow it turned out that sat next to that dock were the Lawrence family. The other key figure at the trial was Stephen's companion that night, Dwayne. This time, Dwayne wasn't needed to say, I saw that person. He was there to set the mood and give a description of the attack. Dwayne's father had been ill for some time. And in fact, it was uh, the night before he was due to give evidence that his father died. It had to be done, in, in a sense. And it's for my friend. And it's to get justice for him, I'm happy. Um, that I was able to give evidence on that day, um, I'm relieved. At last, Dwayne was able to tell a jury what had happened on that fateful night 18 years ago. His account was backed up by the forensic scientists who had proved that the blood and fibres found on Norris and Dobson's clothing came from Stephen. The defence based their case around the possibility that the exhibits had been contaminated. The defence will always want to argue in a case like this that the material hasn't been kept separate or it hasn't been properly stored and there may have been contamination from one garment to another. In the 1990s, evidence was kept in paper bags sealed with sellotape and it was argued that cross-contamination could have happened over the years. We spent an awful lot of time, bear in mind that it was 2008 when we realised that we had some significant evidence just going back and seeing exactly where each exhibit was. And one of the features of the case is that we've plotted almost a map of where the exhibits were, and if they were ever together, and what condition they were, and what condition the bags were in. Because the evidence found was of different types, there was blood evidence, and fibres evidence, and hairs, and it was found on four different items. That combination of evidence um, helped me rule out the possibility of contamination. Another key part of the case was the surveillance footage recorded in 1994, which had never yet been seen by a jury. It went some way, if not all the way, to establishing they were capable of this crime. In a disastrous decision, the defendants took the stand. Dobson did really badly. I mean, he, he basically admitted him um, being a racist and having racist views. He had no choice because of the tape, to be honest. But it just seems to have been a pretty bad decision which backfired spectacularly. And it's always difficult reading juries, but I sense that their attitude towards him changed. Norris's mother claimed he was at home on the night of the murder, an alibi she'd never mentioned before. Norris himself also gave evidence and said the clothing seized didn't belong to him, but his brother. You have to wonder what on earth he was thinking he could possibly achieve by going on that stand. And as the saying goes, thank God for the stupid. 
the jury found the defendants guilty of murder. Gary Dobson and David Norris were going to prison for killing Stephen Lawrence. After 18 years, a number of police investigations, a failed prosecution, a public inquiry, an OBE and a broken marriage, Neville and Doreen Lawrence had won some justice for their murdered son. I've lost a friend and you know, everyone else has lost a friend. But at the end of the day, they lost their son. You have to conclude that they are the stuff that legends you know, novels are made about, people who just will not let go. You know, they were determined to get justice for Stephen. What does the name uh, of Stephen Lawrence come to represent? Well, more than just a cause celebre, more than just uh, a, a miscarriage uh, of, of justice, although it was all those things. It has come to represent an aspiration an aspiration of a family and a community for justice and to see justice done, but also the aspiration of a bright, able, black young man to make something of his life. The tragedy uh, has been that he had to lose that life in order to make something of that name, Stephen Lawrence. <laughs>